What's up design family and welcome to another video. On this episode, we'll be looking at the fit design beginner's guide on how to start your own sportswear or lifestyle brand. I'll be taking you through step by step and running you through what is required to get your own brand up and running. I hope you guys are ready. This is going to be an amazing video. Welcome to Fit Design TV. On this channel, we'll explore what it takes to make it as an active wear fashion brand, whilst providing tips, tricks, and actionable steps towards starting your own product line. Whether you're an entrepreneur looking to start your own brand or just someone interested in fitness fashion, there's something for you here. Step one when starting your brand is you need your logo. There are two components of a logo to consider. Number one is the word mark, it's the actual word. And number two is the emblem or the symbol. It's very important not to skip over this step as your logo is your icon. It's what people will recognize you by for many years to come. So come out the gate swinging. There are many ways to make a logo, but the easiest way would be to use one of the many free logo makers that you can find online that allow you to make a basic logo with a great font and a nice icon. www.fitdesign.com even has one so you guys can check that out and you guys can make a free logo on there. If you wanted to make something a bit more advanced, you can look at tools like Procreate on the iPad and Adobe Illustrator on any Mac or Windows machine and you'll be able to put together some form of symbol and word mark together. Some fonts to look at for this year that are trending are definitely sans serif fonts, bold, sharp, and wide. I have a couple up on the screen with the actual names of the fonts that you guys can look at, and that will be a great starting point. Number two, when starting your product line is your items, your actual physical product. What are you going to make? The best way to go about this would be figure out what time of year you want to launch it. Obviously, fashion is somewhat dependent on the time of year. We wear for the environment that we're in. So if you're going to launch in winter, it's very different than if you're going to launch in summer. Figure out when you're going to launch and then roll with it from there. Once you know when you're going to launch, figure out the different types of products you want to put out. Let's just say you want to launch in winter. You want to have a nice pair of fleece joggers. You want to have a zip up and you want to have a long sleeve crew neck, all for men. Already you've laid out your three different items that you want to design. From there, inspiration, creating your own visual mood board. www.pinterest.com is a great place to start. It's like an image based search engine where you can go and search certain terms and just give you a ton of images and you be able to essentially build a mood board for every item that you have in mind based on reference images and inspiration images. So it's as simple as this. You go on Pinterest, create a board for every you know, for each product you have, for the hoodie, for the joggers, for the long sleeve, and then pin by searching on Pinterest, pin images that you like that relate to that product to that board. And from there you'll build like a visual directory of all images that are related to that board. And it's free um, and you don't need any tools. All you need is a laptop, all you need is an iPad, whatever it is, and you're able to build a visual board. Once you have your ideas or your designs, you wanna build a tech pack. What is a tech pack? I'm not gonna get into too much detail because that's a entire other topic for an entire different video, but a tech pack in short is a construction document that tells the factory how to make this customized apparel because that's what we're making. We're making customized apparel, not off the shelf stuff that you're just printing a logo on. A great place to put together a tech pack is www.techpacker.com and you'll be able to essentially lay out the different boards required in tech pack. I'll run you guys through what a tech pack typically contains and that should serve as the basis for your tech packs. You need to have some form of mock-up in there, the material specification, you need to have the colorway schedule, the different colors that you're using, some form of sizing chart, a technical sheet with some idea of the technical details of the garment, um, a spec sheet that has all the different detailing as well of the garment, the zippers, what types of zippers, uh, what trims that are used, all that information is very important and it should be included in your tech pack. 
you want to make sure that when you send the tech pack to the factory, it's as accurate and as thorough as possible so that they don't make any mistakes. That's why tech pack is key. Step four. Now that you have your tech pack, you want to find a supplier to make the garment according to your tech pack. This is probably the scariest part for most and I can see why, but it doesn't have to be. There are a couple places to find reliable suppliers. A great place to start, despite what you may have heard, is www.alibaba.com. You can sort through the suppliers based on their rating, their trustworthiness. You can even check out some reviews. Obviously, read the reviews. You want to make sure that uh, those reviews are not artificial. And from there, you're even able to request a sample. Sometimes they have uh, stock samples of their products that are that they've already made that they can send to you. or you want to get them to make this customized sample. In my opinion, always get them to make customized samples. Why is that? Some suppliers may play sneakily and they may send you examples of the work that are not actually the work. So the benchmark of quality that you have in mind is very different and you only see what the real quality is like after you've placed your order. So always get a sample of the goods to make sure that they can create what you're looking for. There's also another website called www.clothingregister.com that has a ton of great information on there in terms of suppliers and their, their locations. It's just a matter of finding the right supplier for you. At this stage, since this is the beginner manual, you want to go for a cut and sew supplier that can also supply you with the fabrics, the any trims that you need, and any packaging and labels. You don't want to, you wouldn't be able to go out and get that yourself. That is a whole other video in itself as well. So stay tuned for the advanced manual where I'll run you through the intricacies of creating a supplier network and essentially creating a supply chain. But here we're just focusing on the cut and sew supplier. That's who you want to work with. Their minimums will range. You'd be looking at somewhere between 100 and 500 in the lower end. So minimum order quantity, what is that? I'm sure that that's a term that you've heard before. And the minimum order quantity or the MOQ is what the factory will require of you in terms of purchasing in order to honor a specific given price or even in order to be able to accept an order. And that number is based on the style. Style refers to a specific color of a specific design of a specific product. So that's what style refers to. Once you've communicated with the factory, request a quotation based on the tech pack that you've sent them and the MOQ that you're requesting. Approve the quotation. Make sure to get a quotation first before purchasing any samples. That way you know that what price they're giving you is in the price range that you're willing and comfortable paying. Once you receive the quotation, ask for a fit sample. Most factories will charge for this and that's fine. You'll want to pay them for it. There is a certain amount of time and labor involved in creating a customized sample. So you'll find that there's a balance of what you're paying for and what you're getting. You want to ask for a fit sample so that you can receive this garment, see your customized design and try it on in person. And then from there, you're able to make any changes that you need, communicate those changes. And from there, you'll be able to place your order for the bulk order. Once you have that order in, the typical time will differ from factory to factory. In our experience, it's around two to three months, and that involves obviously the fabric sourcing time, because bear in mind, the factory is sourcing your fabric in this case, so they won't be able to start cutting as soon as you place your order. They'll have to place an order from their own supplier for whatever trims, packaging, and fabrics they have for your specific order. So that's something to bear in mind. Once the order is finished, there are a couple ways to get it delivered to wherever you are. The main two would be shipping and air freight. At a smaller scale where you don't have the luxury of time and the luxury of pre-planning, you want to go with air freight. It's going to cost more per unit, but at the lower quantities, you're really not going to see as much cost saving and you're going to benefit from the faster times. From there, you want to know where you're going to store it. You're going to store it at your apartment. You have a small warehouse, wherever it may be, get it into there. And now the next step is get a website up and running, an e-commerce store. That's step five. 
you want to look at getting a simple to use e-commerce store. There's a ton of different platforms that are free to use. And obviously you may pay for customized features or whatever it may be, but websites like www.shopify.com, Squarespace, all offer great options, or you can choose to work with a customized design agency that's able to give you something that is 100% tailored to your needs. So it obviously depends on what you're looking for at the time. Once you have your website up and running, you'll want to register with some form of third-party label generation app. Because once your order comes in, you'll want an easy way to print out a shipping label so that you're not having to fill those out by hand based on your customer's order details and where their shipping address is. There are a couple of great options and I'll put a couple up on the screen right now so that you guys can try them out, see what they have to offer. Number six is your shipping partner. Who are you going to be shipping with? Now that you have your product, you have your website, you're beginning to make sales, you wanna get this amazing product to your customer so that they can try it, love it, and order more and tell all their friends about it, obviously. There are a couple of great options depending on where you are. The most global are DHL, UPS, TNT if you're in Europe, FedEx, USPS in the US. They all vary depending on their location, their efficiency, their pricing, but you'll wanna meet with a corporate manager from there to discuss rates beforehand. A pro tip is to always negotiate your rates with the shipping managers. Um, they will always promise you that these are the best rates that you can, that they can give you, but it just takes a little bit of finessing and a, li a little bit of back and forth and you're able to negotiate on those rates. It's very important to not take the first rate that they give you as the be all end all. So that's a wrap guys. These are the six steps towards starting your own customized brand. Seems like a lot of work and in reality it is, but believe me, it is super worth it and you'll be so thankful that you actually did it. Until next time guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Stay awesome and we'll see you in the next video.